Hi class and welcome back. Now in some earlier modules we've talked to you about insect problems you may run into or disease causing organisms and diseases that may uh, show up in your citrus and so now we're going to move on to some things which really are a little bit different. Now um, we're going to cover in these next few modules some abiotic disorders and by abiotic I mean there is no living pathogen or living organism caught in involved in causing those symptoms on your tree. However, uh, in this module, I'm going to go over through uh, a couple of things which does involve living organisms, but they aren't really classified as diseases or insect problems. And so in this module, we're going to talk about some other disorders, uh, mainly uh, bird damage, thorn damage, and rodent damage. Uh, now bird damage, this is one which is very common. And it's seen on a lot of different fruit. Um, and uh, it looks something like this. And if you have fruit, and this shows up on you, um, or most people are quick to conclude that they have a real bad disease problem or something which they need to really get to fast. <clears throat> well, if you see something like this, a lot of times what you got is bird damage, especially grapples. And this is a grapple. Uh, it's actually kind of like a cute bird, except so many people have had so many bad encounters with it. There aren't many people who uh, would call a grackle their favorite bird. Uh, they are ones that very commonly damage the fruit, and what they do is they damage the fruit by, by pecking it and scratching it. And you think, okay, why are those grackles and those birds doing that to my citrus fruit? And it's not because they're trying to eat the fruit. What they're doing is they're using the citrus oils that are uh, in high concentration in the fruit skin and they're using that on and putting it on their feathers and by doing that they kind of are making their feathers more waterproof and also uh, the citrus oils can help to keep down pests on the birds as well uh, and it helps to keep mites and other uh, insects that might try to get into the birds feathers off and so they're actually doing a little bit of uh, self uh, prevention by using those citrus oils from your citrus fruit to make their feathers waterproof and help to control um, the pests and insects. And thorn damage, now sometimes it can look a lot like bird damage, but with thorn damage, you're gonna have you know puncture marks and scratches, and like I said, it can be very similar to the bird beet damage. Um, it's not as common because most citrus trees don't have thorns. Uh, only the thorny ones are you going to get thorn damage, and that would be primarily your, your lemons and your limes. Unless, of course, you allow the rootstock to grow um, on the trifoliate orange, it has lots of thorns. So if you let those rootstocks, stems, and limbs grow, they can actually do some thorn damage to your fruit. And if you do have thorn damage, something that looks like this, uh, usually if you look around, you'll see a thorn nearby because this thorn damage uh, is caused by uh, movement of the fruit near the storm uh, during wind or uh, anything else that causes the, move, the fruit to move around, uh, it can get punctured and scratched and scraped by the storm. As you can see here, it's sticking out right near the fruit. Uh, and the biggest concern with both thorn and bird damage uh, is that it creates infection points for disease. Now the Fruit is still edible, it's not um, damaged in any way as far as whether you can eat it. Uh, but if those wounds aren't just superficial, if they go all the way in to those juice vesicles within the fruit, then you're going to be inviting disease organisms and insects in, and the fruit will quickly decay and drop off the tree. And um, good ways of preventing damage uh, from the birds or from the thorn, of course, one way if you have thorns, prune the thorns uh, away from any developing fruit. So if you're out checking your fruit as it begins to grow and you see a thorn sticking out near the fruit that's developing, go ahead and prune the thorn off and it will protect it from the thorn damage. And uh, to prevent the bird damage, there's only one way really uh, effectively doing it and that's to somehow physically keep the birds off your tree. Uh, here you can see this is one example of doing it using a bird net uh, to keep the birds from being able to get to uh, the fruit and cause the damage. Uh, but otherwise, uh, it's really hard to keep the birds away. Now usually, unless there's a, a huge bird population coming through your, uh, 
by your house at one time. Uh, the fruit damage on the tree, the total fruit damage is very minimal and usually you can, can live with a little bit of damage. But just watch out if the, the damaged fruit starts to drop and disease is developing on that fruit. Go ahead and remove it and get rid of it. Now we move into one that we see a lot of times in our area and people are always curious to what is going on with their citrus tree and that's rodent damage. Uh, and what you'll often see is you'll have this hollowed out fruit that's left hanging on the tree. Usually because the rodent wants to stay out of sight when it's doing its damage, they're within the interior of the tree. So you can look at a tree and it looks like this nice, beautiful, ripening fruit hanging on the tree and because what you're seeing is one side of the fruit. But you go to pick it and when you pick it, all you're picking is the leftover skeleton of the fruit. The mummy, just the peel is left there, like this. What has happened is the rodent has completely hollowed out that fruit, eaten everything on the inside, and left the rind hanging. Uh, the most common culprit that causes this damage is uh, the roof rat, uh, ratus ratus. And that is, those are very common. Um, a lot of people say, well, I don't have any rats in my uh, around my house, so it can't be caused by rats. You'd be surprised. These guys are nocturnal, so you're not going to see them during the day. They stay hidden somewhere. They can find lots of places to hide and come out at night and feed on your citrus. Uh, they will also chew on the bark sometimes, especially during uh, times whenever there's uh, a drought maybe and they're looking for moisture or sometimes just uh, to work on their, their teeth or they want to eat sometimes the tender bark, they, they can actually cause severe bark damage and that's what you're seeing here is um, the bark has been chewed away in large patches here on these limbs. And that was caused by uh, Mr. Radish Radish here, the roof rat. Now how are you going to prevent the roof rats from damaging your citrus trees? Well, they're called roof rats because they don't like to be on the ground a lot. They like to, to stay up high, moving around from roof to roof or from roof to tree. So uh, one of the ways of uh, preventing uh, this, the roof rat damage is to keep your, the branches pruned away from buildings. So if the rats are hiding during the day in a building and then you have your citrus tree limbs touching or very near that building, they'll just go from the building to the citrus tree have their meal and then go back to the citrus tree, back to the building where they're going to hide. So one way is to keep the branches trimmed away from buildings. Don't let them get too close or touch the buildings. Um, another way is to eliminate the habitat. If, if you have um, limbs or uh, woody material or anything like that piled up somewhere in your yard, that's a great place uh, for rats to hide. And so they may be hiding in those uh, areas like that. And so if you can eliminate the habitat of the roof rat, um, you can reduce the chances of having roof rat damage. And another is you can use uh, rat traps and put them around your tree. You can even put them in your tree on the limbs. A lot of people do that because if you put them on the ground, uh, sometimes roof rats will run along the ground and up the tree. Uh, like the doctor said, though, they do like to stay high. Uh, but if you're putting them on the ground, you, you know, they are non-selective, so anything walking around under that tree will get snapped. So it's even better if you put those traps up in the tree, you know, secure them somewhere uh, near the fruit, and the rat's gonna have to run along the limb to get to the fruit, so put your rat trap there, and you can catch and reduce uh, the population of roof rats that you have that are causing damage. And, and remember that they are non-selective, so they'll trap anything. So if you really want to be judicious about it, what you'll do is, roof rats are nocturnal, so put your traps out at night. In the morning, go check the traps, uh, get rid of any that have a dead rat in them, get rid of the rat, and uh, then take down all the rat traps that haven't been snapped yet. And so that way, during the day, you're not gonna have any birds visiting and, and get trapped by the, by the trap or anything else that's 
uh, comes out during the day because um, since the roof rats are only out at night, that's when you want to put your traps out. And you'll uh, do better at controlling the rats and not damaging anything else. So those are a few uh, animal problems that you might have um, caused by um, birds and rodents, specifically the roof rat, and of course thorns. Not very common, but we wanted to put it in there, so if you see something like that, uh, you will recognize it. And now we're going to move on in the next module, talk about a few abiotic disorders that you might have.